Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for January 4th, 2023. Well, my goodness, yesterday we had quite the drama in the price action here where we gapped up and then had a pop and drop and then tested some lows and then rallied back but at the end of the day we didn't resolve anything and as a matter of fact what we continue to show is just a very wide ranging chopping consolidation where we're it's actually very very dangerous um, right now in the market because we get those white candles those bull bull candles in here trying to uh, make that move higher and then uh, we run into the resistance and we pull back and if you jumped long you're disappointed and if you push down toward the lows and you get short and then all of a sudden we bounce off of those lows and push back up and you're burned if you go short as well and unfortunately we're stuck in this market here right now with so much uncertainty out here um, to deal with now the Dow remains the strongest of the indexes holding on to that support level here but you have to recognize the fact that we broke these resistance levels in the chart as well so honestly we kind of set up for a potential short side move uh, to the downside and we're looking for inspiration it's it's almost if the futures are working desperately to find inspiration trying to convince everyone this is a bullish market this is a bullish market but unfortunately we're not getting any follow-through and um, I suspect that a lot of folks are having their accounts chopped to pieces here trying to um, rush in long or rush in short and then being um, almost immediately disappointed on those moves now one thing you want to kind of keep in mind is that this range in the Dow is over 830 points so you can see how the danger of this if you try to jump in and grab something up here at the top and it pulls back again um, how deep and depressing that could be and the same thing is true for those who want to be short and they jump in down here to go short and then we reverse back up so very very dangerous here in the diamonds now our technicals here on the diamonds continue to hold up um, you know relatively well if you look in here we're, we're hanging in here around that 50-day moving average our 34 EMA our 20 um, SMA our uh, 500 are still up above there but we are back above our 200 day so relatively well but unfortunately when we look at our other indexes that is not the case if we take a look at the SPY SPY also stuck in this wide-ranging um, consolidating um, area here that's more than 100 points but unfortunately in this chart we're still in a bearish downtrend and we are still struggling with these price resistance levels in the chart and unable to break through um, those levels so not nearly the bullish picture that we have here in the Dow and we can certainly see that in our technical patterns as well with the price of the SPY being below the 50-day moving average our shorter term moving averages 34 20 8 exponential all below the 8 and we're still struggling below the 200-day moving average so clearly our moving averages are kind of on the wrong side of each other here in the SPY so a bit more on the bearish side here um, in um, the spy and then as we continue to try and inspire um, a, a buying well we saw some pretty heavy selling yesterday in Tesla and Apple that really kind of put a dark cloud um, over the market yesterday and we have to recognize the fact that the QQQ um, um, is also continuing in its bear trend and what we did yesterday is we pushed down here testing these levels in the chart kind of pushed down and got a little bit of a bounce back at the end of the day but as you can see what we've got going on here in the QQQ is not bullish at all um, probably the worst of the indexes out there and if we take a look in here we can see our 50-day moving average on this chart starting to roll back to the downside our shorter term moving averages are crossing down through that 50 
Um, even if we get a rally back, we've got a long ways to go before QQQ becomes a positive or a bullish looking chart. And then if we jump over into IWM, well, IWM tried to get something going yesterday in the morning, tried to pop this range of this choppy consolidation area, tried to get her done, but then ultimately swung all the way back down into the support levels of the day, um, just adding more insult to injury and probably more questions and answers here on this chart. And as we try to pump it up again this morning to inspire some buying, well, we want to consider here in the chart, this chart, that we have nothing bullish to really go on. We um, had this head and shoulders top in here that's played out with a break of the neckline we made a, a lower high here followed by lower lows we've got price underneath our 50 our 34 our 20 day moving averages 200 day moving average continues to decline down creating this moving average squeeze here a bearish moving average squeeze possibility in um, iwm so Again, you know, we can lean on the Dow, but please keep in mind there's only 30 stocks in the Dow and um, the majority of the market still remains with this bearish aspect uh, to it, uh, whether we like it or not. So be kind of careful just rushing in on long trades thinking there's just no way we can go lower because that's not what the majority of the market is telling us. If we take a look at our um, VIX, yesterday we had a little bit of a push back up and here again just more confusion um, in the market and I think it's just that uncertainty about what 2023 is really going to bring there's been so much conversation about recession um, um, we could actually see a deflationary type market condition which means we're going to struggle to find momentum and I think that's what we're dealing with here um, in these charts if you take a look we tried to break that um, resistance level here in the chart yesterday and just ultimately ended up getting nothing done here we're continuing to spin around um, with all this uncertainty in the market so kind of keep that in mind if if um, we get a little bit more fear today and we start breaking that resistance up here just remember once we break a resistance we need a proof that we're going to hold it as support before any major worry starts coming in. So a lot of uncertainty here, um, even in the VIX. If we take a look at our T2122, well, our T2122 didn't really help <laughs> yesterday. We um, pushed down here in T2122 and then the rally back at the end of the day just kind of leaves us right back here in that middle of the range, meaning that if we can find some bullish inspiration in the market, we certainly have upside opportunity if we can find it if we find bearish inspiration for the day we certainly have plenty of downside opportunity and what we've seen lately is we kind of whipsaw both directions um, in this consolidating mode so be really really careful here on the day remember t2122 doesn't give us direction in the market um, at all it just tells us where those pressure points are if we're an oversold or overbought um, regions of that chart. If we take a look at our T2108, well, T2108 just kind of didn't do anything yesterday. Um, we pushed down a little bit, pushed back up a, a little bit. Um, at the end of the day, we continue to stay in this, um, this range of the chart, 37, 38% of the stocks holding above their 40 day. Pretty rough to make a big bullish statement about that um so just kind of spinning uh, around here if we take a look at our t2107 um, much the same but in a better condition because we're holding above some support but here again we really didn't get anything done yesterday um, so we'll have to just kind of keep an eye on that. Our T2101 continues to be very, very confused um, because we're not finding momentum here overall in the market. Um, we, we have a wide ranging chop and, and really no momentum um, to follow through. And I think one of the reasons that is occurring um, is we continue to struggle with um, 
um, these economic data points that continue to come out uh, bearish. Yesterday we had a very bearish number on PMI, showed no improvement, continuing to show that the U.S. economy is in contraction. We saw um, uh, numbers not improving in construction spending. Already this morning we have a big drop in mortgage applications. Um, um, uh, we're showing that today and then we're going to face a market moving ISM number, a manufacturing number, which has been problematic. We've got uh, a job openings report that has remained stubbornly sticky and very, very high. It's one of the things that the Fed is really trying to bring some balance back to the labor market. And that job openings report hasn't been helping us a lot. So this is one of those where bad news is good news. If we get a major decline in the job openings report, that would be good news for the market. If it holds up or, or um, holds in that sticky area that it's been, that could be bad for the market today. And then we're probably going to just really get choppy as we wait for minutes of the FOMC, which I suspect are going to continue to show us that the uh, Fed is going to remain pretty tenacious in fighting um, inflation, even though there's that narrative that continues to pop up out there. Now the Fed's going to suddenly pivot. Boy, they have said nothing uh, to suggest that they are going to suddenly pivot um, on this. So kind of keep in mind that may just reinforce uh, their commitment to fight inflation today. And then as we look forward into Thursday, well, it doesn't get a whole lot better. We get ADP, international trade, jobless claims, um, petroleum and uh, natural gas reports on the day. And then the afternoon, we've got Bullard speaking. So um, still lots of uncertainty on this path forward. So kind of keep that in mind. These numbers could move us around a lot today and end up kind of leaving us stuck in a range. Um, let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today. Now our earnings calendar, we had just a little bit more going on today. There's actually five companies reporting. We've only got one um, reporting this morning that's somewhat notable, um, UNF. Um, reporting in the pre-market today. Um, so keep an eye on UNF. And then we're going to hear later on in the day from RGP after the bell. We'll hear from them and we'll also hear from SLP um, later on today. Um, again, not really the market moving um, reports that we would kind of like to see. So with that, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could please do me that favor and click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment that helps the algorithm. Um, um, uh, it's the engagement with the video that makes a difference. So thank you to everyone who does take the time to do that. And also, I want to thank everyone who does who takes the time to share this video out there on your social media feed that helps us to continue to find those new folks that um, might be interested in this type of content so thank you very much everyone i truly appreciate it we're at 20 over 29,400 subscribers so we're slowly climbing toward that 30,000 and thank you for everyone who um, helps uh, that process along Let's take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. And please keep in mind, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any securities. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to do your own due diligence and make sure that this market is suitable for you. Because with this wide ranging chop, there's an awful lot of danger. And I think we're going to have to be a little bit more patient in waiting for our good quality trades to set up. I think we're going to have to expect a little bit less in um, immediate gratification on trades, meaning we may have to hold those trades longer to get the profits to come into those. If we slip into kind of that recessionary market, then expect to see a lot more of consolidation. You may want to start exploring if you don't know how to use.
premium collection strategies, you may want to start exploring those and be prepared for that because if we do slip into that recessionary market, those may be some very profitable ways to take advantage of these consolidating moves in the market. Now, that being said, let's take a look at a few stocks that are doing okay and holding up. Um, I've been keeping an eye on uh, TSM here. Now, TSM, um, um, semiconductor chips, um, really important. TSM is building a huge manufacturing facility in Arizona. Let's keep an eye on those. If I look at this on the longer term, um, on a weekly, one of the things I'm starting to uh, see develop here is an inverted head and shoulders pattern coming into play. We still don't have that neckline broken and we still don't have that certainty that we can do that. If we look at our technicals here, we broke above the 50 and right now we're trying to hold that 50 day moving average. And you want to notice that our shorter term averages have crossed up through that 50. So there is that possibility for a pattern in here, what we call a rounded bottom breakout, that if we can hold in here, we might move on up toward that 200 and maybe keep on going to the upside. So keep an eye on TSM. It's one that I am interested in and maybe interested in, in more of a longer term position to see if that can come around. Some of the defensive sector stocks continue to hold up. We saw KHC hanging in there nicely yesterday. Again, when the market is uncertain, when the market just is you know, uncertain about the path forward in 2023. This might be a boring stock, but something that pays a 4% annualized return and continues to hold in a bullish pattern may be a comfortable place for a lot of folks to be. And we've been seeing this rotation for some time where some of these old, boring, dividend paying companies are holding up pretty well. So keep a close eye on them. The, the thing about them that's boring is they don't tend to move very fast. And um, we could see an awful lot of consolidations. But if you own the stock, um, the consolidation might not be so bad if you continue to receive about a 4% return just on the dividend yield here in KHC. Let's take a look at gold. Oh my goodness, GLD. GLD moving, moving, moving. Had a nice upside move yesterday. Continues that nice upside move. Breaking through some resistance here this morning. Now keep in mind it might be a little bit of a steep rally. We might need a little rest or pullback so I don't know that I would want to chase it today. But take a look at those precious metals everything in those precious metals the miners um, um, are looking really good as well silver um, very very strong in this upside trend you can see we're getting a little bit of a pop and drop today but once again this has been such a steep rally we may need a little bit of rest or consolidation in that chart so watch some of those precious metals you can even see some nice moves starting to to uh, form up here in FCX. FCX has been in this nice little resting consolidation in here. Let's look for that opportunity. If those bulls can get going here on those metals, there might be that opportunity for that to perk up. I even saw um, some a uh, little bit of bullishness coming into some of the uranium plays yesterday. Um, they were starting to come up out of these bottoms and test some downtrends. You might want to keep an eye on some of those commodities that might be positively affected in here. If we take a look at um, stocks like in, in um, steel, steel picking up here a bit. As you can see, we've got a bullish pattern going here in CLF. We may have to rest a little bit more out to this trend. Obviously, we still have some overhead resistance to deal with this in the chart, but starting to show those improvements here in some of those steel companies. Of course, if you're looking for um, stocks that just continue to run, you might want to take a look at Boeing. Boeing is very, very strong. Now, we're going to be approaching some very substantial resistance areas here in the chart. So watch that carefully. This may have to slide into a longer term consolidation. But, you know, watch that closely. Um, it might be just what you're looking for. Uh, Caterpillar is also one of those that's been holding in this very um, long formed consolidation. But notice we're trying to deal with this all time high here in CAT. If we can break out up there, 
then hey there may be some opportunities and you can see that nice little pattern that's formed in here that resting pullback if we can get some buyers pushing up well maybe we break through those resistance highs um, in the chart there are quite a few other charts out there to look at more than i can really point out this morning but be very very careful here like i said as we continue in this wide ranging chop there can be an awful lot of danger we can get a lot of head fakes we can get a lot of uh, breakouts that suddenly fail so make sure you're paying attention where's your trend where's your price support where's your resistance in the chart before you make those trades happen plan those trades carefully understanding that we may have slower movement in the market if we are going to slip into a recessionary market you may have to hold and make sure those stops are acceptable um, for you before you jump in on the trade and try to be really really questioning and whether or not that big white candle or that big red candle or black candle um, in my case here is the candle that you want to chase maybe look carefully at the support resistance and trend and plan that trade a bit more carefully in a market that seems stuck right now and may remain stuck in here all the way through for two more weeks before we hit um, earnings reports that may start to break this log jam. So just kind of keep that in mind. Everyone have a fantastic day. I want to wish you all of the best in your trading. Be safe and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Wish you all the best.